This is Twit. The ransomware groups have now been spotted successfully compromising motherboard firmware. Um, one of the consequences of Conti's boasting uh, to about how they side with Russia, as we talked about a couple times, is that somebody within the Conti membership who had good access to what was going on leaked a bunch of the internal chats from that you know that was always meant to stay private. So the following leaked message posted exactly one year ago on June seventh, coincidentally, twenty twenty one. It reads, and this is this is good English, considering that it was probably a, a native Russian speaker uh, from someone named Stern. He wrote, "Hi, things are good. I apologize for not immediately responding." I haven't communicated through a toad. That's what it says. Maybe that's, I don't know, a typo or something. Haven't communicated through a toad for a long time. And Leo, for what it's worth, I don't, I doubt that you or I have ever communicated through a toad. <laughs> uh, I, I have know. to say it. It probably means something in the hacker world. I don't know. Yeah. So Stern said, I haven't seen what you wrote. Now I'm finishing a full report on the mechanism of operation of the Intel ME, you know, Intel Management Engine controller, and the AMT technology based on it. Recovered a bunch of undocumented commands using reverse, meaning reverse engineering, uh, interface dump and fuzzing. Unfortunately, the starting theory based on the presentation of embeddy slash positive technologies reporters was not confirmed in the form in which they presented it. But, okay, so that was probably referring to, back at the time, a report of vulnerabilities in the Intel management engine. So this guy jumped on those, rubbing his hands together, thinking, oh, cool, you know, I'm going to go pursue this. So he's saying, unfortunately, the starting theory based on the presentation of Embeddy slash positive technologies reporters was not confirmed in the form in which they presented it. Meaning, you know, it wasn't what they said, but he stayed with it. He said, but there is another legal mechanism to activate AMT, but so far it has not reached the working software. At the moment, I make a sniffer buffer that provides the H HECI interface because it is all configured in UEFI. Then the sniffer took a little longer. After I fully restore the command set, the POC will be prepared. There are ideas. If we talk about the topic of UEFI, then this is not just a load dropper, but also perhaps some demon of the level of SMM processors, system management mode processors. He said, plus, since now I have tightly studied the management engine controller, the idea is to test such functionality as rewriting the SPI flash drive through it. Usually this controller is allowed to write to the flash drive, which cannot be said about the processor. And some commands were found that are responsible for this functionality. So bottom line is, in this posting, which was leaked from Conti, from, and, and this was made, the, the original posting was from a year ago, this guy is saying, I have achieved what I needed to as a consequence of this reverse engineering of the Intel management engine firmware on the motherboard of uh, pretty much everything. Um, so... The conversations among the Conti members have shed light on the syndicate's attempts to search for vulnerabilities related to the management engine firmware and BIOS right protection. They reverse engineered the system to locate undocumented commands and vulnerabilities in the management engine interface, achieved code execution in the management engine to access and rewrite the SPI flash memory and dropped system management mode level implants, which could be leveraged to modify the OS kernel. That is the operating system running that is booted 
on this motherboard. The leaked chats show that the work ultimately resulted in proof-of-concept code last summer that can obtain system management mode code execution by gaining control over the management engine after obtaining initial access to the host through traditional vectors like phishing, malware, or supply chain compromise. Basically, we, we, we're always talking about how you get in to a machine and then often you need to elevate your privilege. And what you're probably doing is looking to see where you are and then moving laterally. Now, this group, some members somewhere, have developed the technology to go down rather than out and across. That is, they are now able to infiltrate the firmware of motherboards. Security researchers who have been privy to these chat logs have observed that, quote, the shift to management engine firmware gives attackers a far larger pool of potential victims to attack and a new avenue to reaching the most privileged code and execution modes available on modern systems. And of course, as we know, and as I mentioned in my notes that I deleted or somehow didn't make it uh, in, into the show notes, um, it's, it's enough trouble getting people to update, to update their operating systems and their application software. The bad guys know that there is a, a, a serious update log, uh, or lag, rather, in, in getting that to happen. So imagine how many more systems firmware is never touched. And to that add the fact that I'm sure many of us here listening to this podcast, because we tend to have propellers spinning on our heads, have done firmware updates I've encountered, and I'm sure everybody has encountered, warnings saying, basically, leave the, leave the firmware that you have alone unless something, that, like there's some hardware problem that you're, that you're coming here to update your firmware for. That is, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And so th 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 this, this notion in firmware land is still sort of pre-viral it's the only reason to update firmware would be to 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 fix some hardware level compatibility problem not because there might be something evil crawling around in there that you want to update so as a consequence i mean i'm sure the majority of systems that are out and running are using firmware that has never been updated since the system was first installed, despite the fact that this podcast has covered multiple firmware problems. And it was one of those, apparently, a year ago that got a member of the Conti group, or at least somebody posting in the Conti Secure Chat channel, that, hey, you know, I figured this out. We now, if we can run code in the user's OS, we can now infiltrate their UEFI BIOS and, and get persistence and, and complete invisibility Terrible. from, from, tra from traditional anti-malware. Yeah, Leo, it, it, it really is. If you have, I mean, uh, does, don't most PCs now have in the firmware a signing certificate for the firmware? Uh, I know they do for the boot, right? The secure boot, right? Right. Does and, it, and is the firmware this, not checked? Uh, there's there's no way for it to check itself. Oh, of course. Be, because you know it. You, 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 it the, the 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 root is the ultimate authority. Right. And so there there's no one there's no third party no to say yeah authority. you're fine yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, boy, that seems like something you might want to put in BIOS or something somewhere. Well, what you really want is to like rigorously write protect this. And right. you know, in the old days, you had motherboards with jumpers, and some server motherboards will still have a a physical write protect jumper right. that that will just you know disable the ability for the firmware to be modified. Well, you that protects, that, but that, that protects BIOS, but it doesn't protect UEFI because that's on the hard drive, right? 
Well, no, uh, and I, you write I, to that all the, the time. I think yes. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, well, the the UEFI is the is on the motherboard. Um, there there is some some information stored on the hard drive, but of course you're able to put new hard drives in, and the UEFI survives. So the UEFI is actually in. Well, is, is in uh, is in NVRAM. All I know is from installing uh, Linux and stuff. If you put a new hard drive in, it wouldn't boot because you don't have an operating system on it. Right. Uh, if you install a UEFI uh, an aware operating system, it is going to write some stuff on the ah hard right. Drive. But so that's so that's like the boot sector yeah. on the partition. But but it's the but UEFI is is, is that stuff th that you get to by hitting F two. It's confusing because it's there's yes. some of it's in firmware. But some of it's in software, isn't it? So, if well, you it, it's the what's in software is what the UEFI BIOS boots to, jumps to and executes. Right. But if yes. you deleted your UEFI partition on a hard drive, you wouldn't boot. Right. 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 So right. there is right. there is firmware UEFI, but there's also software UEFI. And right. Are and they what, talking what, what about the, something that modifies firmware? Yes. Yes, that, that's where the Intel management engine and system management mode and all of that is. Oh, dear. Yeah, it's so they're talking about going down and physically modifying the firmware on the motherboard. So it doesn't matter if you reformat your drive or if you install a new operating system or you do anything. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and I, I, I imagine before long, since the, the, since the, U, the UEFI firmware... It has known bugs. We've talked about them on the podcast. It's got known bugs in the motherboard firmware, and though that is not being updated, and it's, as I said, it's hard enough to get operating systems updated and applications. Uh, I get BIOS updates go. all the time, though, right? I mean, don't I? I mean... Well, and that's the problem, is that the fact that you get BIOS updates means that the BIOS is not protected against being modified. Right, it can be modified. By software. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yep. And once the once something bad gets in there, it because the BIOS is updating itself, it can disable the, the self-update so that it will no, the BIOS will no longer accept an update after it becomes malicious. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, it's 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 really bad. Wow. And you know, and when this is the situation we've created for ourselves. Yep. 